folks representing uh, the block grant discussion. And um, Jamie, do you want to get yeah. things started? Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of discussion over the block grant <coughs> for the last six months already, I guess, probably longer for, for these folks. But uh, <coughs> last week, there was an email that was sent uh, from DPW, which kind of made it really, to, to me anyway, real. It's been a lot more discussion for these folks, but what DPW was asking for each county to submit um, a, a channel for the block grant funding to flow to the counties. As it, as it stands now, each of these agencies get their own flow, whether it be by check or by electronic fund transfer of state money, and the state's saying we're only going to send it down one pipeline, so tell us which one, and also give us a point of contact. And to me, at that point, it got kind of real. Real. Yeah. Um, so I briefly talked with, with each of you about it and, and have been talking to some of these people. And uh, we all agreed it would be a good idea to just open this up a little bit and have this discussion. And even since last week, it's become, uh, you know, the heat's getting turned up more and more on the burner. And we're, we're closer and closer, I guess. And I'm hearing now that, uh, that, the, that the state is... They want the block block grant so badly that they're they're willing to negotiate some restoration funds in order to ensure that they get the block grant put in place. So, um, so these agents, four agencies here, are the ones that would be impacted by a block grant, and uh, it kind of gets us to today. If, if we want to just have a discussion, not a real rigid format here, but just something where each agency can talk a little about uh, what the impact could be for your agency, what types of things you have. In the hopper, so to speak, ready to ready to respond to if there if there are cuts, uh, and to and to what degree, and then also to resolve. I think just at least those two questions that DPW is looking for an answer on. Okay, right. and before <coughs> excuse me, you folks start to share with <coughs> us your view of the future. Um, do either of you have a comment to make before they start? Uh, I don't. Oh. I guess I could, uh, I know I've been trying to share some of the information because I, with the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, I knew that this was real and had participated with uh, Lieutenant Governor Jim Cauley in a press conference because I, I, we were told that we're going to get cut no matter what. So it was a matter of trying to figure out how to make the funds go further and the block rate grant made sense, and it has been on CCAP's platform for a long time. They um, do votes every year, discuss the issues, and this came out priority number one this year. So that being said, um, I worked very hard with the County Commissioners Association, uh, and we have weekly conference calls. And uh, as Jamie said, the governor, I think, even has verbally said, if there's um, a block grant, you know, he'd be willing to sign for no less, or I don't know if it sh I should say no less or no more than the 10%. So hopefully it'll do better than that, but there's no way to know that. And um, I guess, you know, if there's an efficiency in this, it would be that instead of each department having to make a plan for submission, which takes a lot of time and paper and copies, and each department having to do an audit, and each department having to do bookkeeping, et cetera, some of those things can have an efficiency because it's one large sum. But from what I'm hearing, internally, if uh, we would like to set up a process where we still give each department X number of dollars based on the percentage they are today, that's, that's our doing. So how we decide to do it internally is something that we will have to discuss. But um, I, I thank you for your patience, your understanding. I know this is not easy for anyone. But if we're going to get cut, we have to figure out how to do it better and uh, more economically and still give the best service to the clients. And uh, that's what we've been trying to work for. Thank you. And the further efficiency might be, this is kind of a... Um, naive maybe observation, but if, if in your department, Jim, you have five streams uh, coming in now, would that give you the latitude to move money 
or you couldn't before, you may have to give it back if you didn't use it all in one funding area, that this would give more latitude in that kind of an area? Is that uh, a possible benefit to this kind yeah. of a setup? We, we've we always had the flexibility well, within our budget to kind of move funds around a, a, a little bit. Okay. Uh, but what the, what, the, what the state did here a few years ago, uh, they came up with the concept of special grants. Uh, and if you were going to uh, provide certain types of services under these special grants, Pennsylvania Promising Practice Evidence-Based Programs, you could apply for a special grant where the reimbursement rate from the state was greater. Uh, it was 80-20, uh, and now through the special grant process, it's 90-10. So it obviously saves the, the county money. That portion of our budget has been moved over into a special grants category, and now has been put into the block grant, where before it was. It was just in a special needs grant that, 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 that they would provide. So the, uh, and the advantage went away. The, the advantage would go away, is what you're saying. If you participated in the special grants, the fact that it's being moved into the block grant means you're back to the 80 percent. No, we still be at the 90 percent. Still okay. We're still at right. the 90 percent. Right. It's my understanding at the latest, and I spoke to uh, the director of Central Region this morning, and she said the reimbursement would remain the same at 90 percent. But then you would have more flexibility because under the grant process, you had to use that money for. Specific. I would still have to use that money specifically. <coughs> you will. For, for, for you still will. Yes. But another advantage to the county would be right now, I think sometimes we end up fronting the money and having to wait to get paid and or returning money, and there's bookkeeping with that to return money at the end of the year, where in the new system we would be getting quarterly payments up front, number one. That's correct. And number two, at the end of the year, we would not have to give the money back. We could just report that we're going to carry that forward, and then we could utilize it in the next that's quarter. That's correct, but I think that's kind of clouding the thing. There's not going to be money left over when you're getting cut. <laughs> you know, that, Theoretically. That, 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 and that's, 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 my, that's my biggest concern with, with, with the block grant. I've done a lot of research on it. Uh, they're saying, well, you know, if you have money left over, you don't need to return it. Uh, I can give it to Kevin, or we can get together a group. Okay, there's more of a need for drug and alcohol. And that sounds great on paper, but when you're getting cut 10% or 20%, there's, it's all, you have all this flexibility. Well, there's no flex left if there's no money. So we're not going to have money left over. Very good well, point. Uh, and and I think when you start to, and I, you know, <clears throat> I understand the County Commissioners Association taking a very positive stance on this, and, and, and that's fine, but, you know, I try to dig a little deeper, and I'm always kind of, kind of looking. It seems to me that just put, gives another bullseye for the state to look for, to make additional cuts down the road. Okay, okay, we're, and then what happens, the pressure's going to be put on the county well, if you want to continue with these programs, you're going to have to come up with the money. We're going to cut. And I'm just concerned that this is just another avenue where they're going to be able to make cuts, and the county is going to have to take a stance, well, we're not going to fund non-mandated services, so we're going to have to discontinue programs. That's my Couldn't they cut the anything road. anyhow? Pardon? They could cut anything anyhow, right? That, that's, that, that's, that's correct. Yeah. But they're less mandated services, from my perspective, they can cut, but in my for my budget, gives me a, still have a little bit more flexibility to try and move things around to make up for if they cut me in counseling dependent, for example. Well, maybe I can take some out of foster care to make up for for those cuts. So you're saying that it makes it easy for them. It's just well, we're just going to put the, you're getting its block grant, and next year we're going to cut it another ten percent, and it's done, right? And it leaves that's, us with the, the issue. That's that's a concern I have. Yeah. Well, that have, I don't know, but I'm just looking. Kind of like this is just another okay. Well, we're going to cut the block grant. They're already cutting it right off the bat. What's going to stop them from doing it again next year and next year? Do you see though, through a cooperative effort across the departments, with one block of money, uh, uh, possibility of savings as far as staffing and things like that, particularly when it comes to fiscal work? From my perspective, because it's just a couple small categories in, in the block grant, we still need to do plans anyway. We'll still need to do the plans. Uh, that's not going to stop from our, and I don't know what all the plans these folks are, are required to do, but I still have to do a plan. I'll be doing a plan for our, our needs-based budget and, and things of that nature. So mine, it's, it's not going to have a tremendous impact. But these folks may be entirely different. Okay. 
I think that's what we need to hear. Are there efficiencies that are going to result in some payroll or you know people savings that uh, will help offset versus direct services suffering? That you know, if you have any thoughts about the fiscal uh, savings, and I'd have to turn that over to, to, you, to you folks because their okay. their chunk of money is much larger than than, than what I'm looking at. Yeah. I, I, there is an advantage in having the, the flexibility. Again, this is all group. Again, Bill, the plane is we're flying it here, and we don't know the answers. And it seems like things are changing every day as we get closer to the end of the fiscal year. But as we understand it, there's some flexibility here in being able to put all the money into one pot and use it as the county sees fit. Um, I don't know that you know within a smaller county like ours that there's going to be any efficiency in terms of reduced. Uh, Staffing, okay. as, which would result, and maybe other folks feel differently, but I don't know where we would um, necessarily save on fiscal staff okay. uh, or administrative staff because, like Jim says, we still have to do plans, we still have to do budgeting, we still have to uh, you know, do invoicing and, and uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable. You know, all the things that we normally do are still going to be there, and it's not like we have large staffs in the first place. So, right. I don't know that we save any staffing, but the flexibility, I think, would be a benefit. But I, I keep saying, when I go to meetings, that we're all focusing on the block grant, right? and to me the issue is the, the cut, whether it be 10 percent or 20. That's a, a much larger <coughs> impact than just whether or not we pull the money in the block grant. Right? We can work together to deal with the block grant right issues. Uh, but how, how do we move ahead with such a significant cut after Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and talk with you about bringing natural gas even further into Lebanon County than we have. Um, let me start by saying that I wish to apologize that I did not appear here before now and should have to make sure you were aware of this and I won't let that omission occur again and I will regularly come back here because in all honesty Lebanon County represents some very interesting business opportunities for UGI. Just a few points. UGI um, services within all of Lebanon County. We either do it through UGI Gas, which was our principal brand until we started uh, two, uh, maybe four years ago, to start purchasing some other gas companies. And while CPG, our affiliate, um, also a gas company, serves in Cold Spring and East Hanover, UGI Gas, the major player, is the one that serves most of Lebanon County. And in such, we are the largest gas company in the state with more than 600,000 customers. Um, and our job, obviously, is to expand expand the use of gas wherever possible because why? Uh, a residential customer today, if they're on oil, they can, they can save $1,500 in a year by switching over to natural gas. Commercial establishments uh, throughout the area can also save if they're on propane, electricity, or heating oil. And so, obviously, the economics are there for the customer. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about today, just so you understand, is some of the economics for the company. Now, the first thing I want to show you, if I may, is blue lines here represents where we are right now today with pipe. And one of the questions that have come up is, there's this industrial complex that's out here where the Red Star is. And how do we get there as quickly as possible? And there really are two potential routes, one from here and one through here. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you today. We're okay where we are? What are the, uh, if I may ask, where you have the pipes existing, you're, you're looking at Lebanon? Yes. yes. Okay, it looks like 22 east mm -hmm. and perhaps 501 north or thereabouts. Yes. yes. One, UGI really isn't a gas company, is that correct? They're a gas distribution company. I'm sorry. 
We are a gas distribution company. You're correct. We do not drill for gas. We do try to use as much Marcellus gas as we can because A, it's cheaper, and B, we don't have to, dis we don't have to move the gas that far. And also we have the Public Utilities Commission of the state encouraging us to use Marcellus gas because it's more reliable and it's more, it's cheaper. But no, we are not a gas driller. We don't have an affiliate that's doing gas drilling. So, no. Do, does UGI as a company get tax incentives of any sort to get more customers onto natural gas? Excellent question. Um, the Congress and the President in a couple of years ago signed uh, legislation that offered accelerated depreciation for companies that would invest in capital. We are the only gas utility or gas distribution company that has extended those savings on to the customers in every um, extension that we'd give. Last year, because of the way the law was written, it was 100% of anything you invested you could accelerate in depreciation. And last year we gave uh, tremendous discounts to people um, because of that, so we reflected that. This year it is 50% of what we invest we can accelerate. And thus we're not giving quite as good deals, but we're giving better deals than anybody else is. When I say everybody else, I mean other gas utilities in the state, because we have taken this incentive and done what I think uh, Congressman Dent and others would want us to do, which is extend the gas lines and pass on the savings to the customers. Are you looking at taking any property by eminent domain to run the gas lines, or would you be running along existing rights of way? To be fair, we don't have any plans at this point in time to use eminent domain. But that's also because we're still negotiating with people to see who wants to be our customers and who does not. Okay. And we, even though we are giving a discounted rate, there are still considerable main extension costs that have to be paid by the customers that want it. The more customers that want it, the less those payments have to be. And we also put some of our own capital cost in. Excuse me. Bill had a second question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, My apologies. I've, no, Bill. that's fine. I'll tell you that more so than ever in our company history, we've been inundated by people wanting to convert I'm over sure. because of the marketing campaign, because of the significant economics. Uh, the price of oil and the price of gas used to be close, and now they're not. Um, last year, we put in, the most we'd ever put in in our lifetime was, say, 5,800 customers. And last year, we put in 10,495 residential and another 1,655 commercial. This year, we're probably going to double uh, the commercial and probably do 15,000 residential. When you figure that out on how much that is, how many per day, that's well, that was the logical. Uh, to finish my line of thought, is it impractical to run a gas line in along a road, a highway, uh, right of way? Uh, I know 22 was just redone, but along the berm, if that right of way already exists, is there too much rumbling from trucks and things, or is that something that can happen? We do look at traffic and we take that into consideration, yes. The fact that that has already been just recently paved makes it unlikely that we would put it there uh, because municipalities do not like us uh, messing up with their pavement. I believe so that's a state road, 22. All right, all right. If it's a state road, the state is also equally uh, reticent to give us right of way where uh, they've just freshly paved. We try very hard to coordinate where we want to go with municipal paving and government paving. We're just doing a big project in Lancaster of uh, well over two miles in which because the state was repaving a state road, we went in there and replaced our pipe, which was cast iron, and, and replaced it because the state was paving. And we didn't want to disrupt its paving later on. So. 
that is a big concern of ours, and obviously the more we can coordinate with a municipality on paving, the more likely we are to choose the project. I mean, we literally are being overwhelmed with projects. And we're also on a very fast track to replace our cast iron and bare steel, which is older pipe we have, and we are in the process of maybe doing 80 to 100 miles of that this coming year. And that's a big amount of our work, and that's a lot of capital. Are those the main lines that you're talking about? Are also lines going into facilities and homes? Those are basically the main lines I was talking about. But when you go in to replace the main lines, you replace the service lines that go off to the customer. Why? Because they're usually old bare steel and you want to put plastic. Are these above ground or underground? Everything we do is underground. And if it's underground, um, I know gathering lines were not regulated. I'm not sure where they stand today. But I was wondering, are these lines regulated as to depth and those sorts of things? Yes, ma'am, they are. Okay. And gathering lines are now regulated by the PUC as to gas, gas safety. Okay. And that is a very big Thick, accomplishment. Thickness of the walls and depth under the frost line and all that sort of thing is covered? It is. Okay. And GI are actually using Pennsylvania pipe. Contracted with the plastic pipe manufacturer in Titusville, so that when our goal is to be serving people with Pennsylvania pipe, Pennsylvania gas to our Pennsylvania customers. Up at the top is the price of oil, and at the bottom is the price of gas. And what that chart shows is gas continues to decline. In fact, maybe you haven't heard, but the good news for your gas customers in Lebanon County is that we will be lowering our rates by 4% as of December 1st. Um, and that continues a downward slide in the price of our natural gas. And that keeps making it more attractive. So along this route that you're considering, are there other businesses that potentially could hook up since you're trying to go to a business in Berks County? Are there businesses in Lebanon County that might be able to take advantage of this hookup? Or? We're at our meeting that unfortunately you folks come to. Um, there were many Lebanon businesses that expressed an interest and our marketing folks are working with each and every one of those to try to see how we can negotiate um, to get to the various people. Are, is there enough interest? I mean some people are interested, uh, some people are not. And the PUC is very, has very strict rules about what we extend. They don't want current customers to be subsidizing future customers. So they they require us to make a good faith effort to get as many customers to pay the larger portion of the cost to bring a main there. Please understand that to bring a main to a place where there's no gas today, it costs between $750,000 and a million dollars a mile. And that is because some of the things that you brought up, Commissioner, in terms of how far you have to put it under, you run into ledge. Sometimes any of us that have dug in Pennsylvania know that that's a problem. Um, if we have to cross streams or run through historical areas, all that has to be figured in as well. Don't like using the condemnation power because A, that takes a long time, and B, it rattles people and they don't like it. So we try to find a way to find customers that are willing to have our pipe on their property. So what our people <coughs> right now are doing in both, uh, both counties are to try to see is there enough interest in, in people willing to pay to get us to extend the name further into the county. As I said before, we always serve all the communities or townships, municipalities in the county. And we are pleased to try to do that. I mean, our business is extending names. Um, do you see the county or the commissioners playing in this? Is it uh, more su our support? or What I want to make sure I do and why I started out with an apology is I want to make sure you're as informed as I can make you as to where we're intending to go, what are the choices, who's talking about connecting, 
you know, there may be municipal buildings that you could help us with if they're willing to connect. Um, you know, anything that makes it more economic is certainly something we'd be interested in. Um, but I intend to keep the three of you in, well, four of you informed. Um, and obviously, to the extent we can coordinate paving, to the extent that uh, we can be granted easements if the county has such an inclination. Anything like that that helps lower our overall costs allows us to be more willing to expand into the areas of the county. May I ask, I guess it's a technical question. Did you create this map or did we? Who created this map? It's my understanding was our map department. Okay. Uh, where I'm going with this is, do, does RGIS have this layer of piping for their, um, I don't know, I guess that's a Cherie question, but I just wondered if we could share data, so for emergency planning and that sort of thing? Well, let me tell you about what we're doing with both Allentown and Bethlehem. We are sharing data on where our lines are and where we're thinking of replacing lines, and they're sharing with us where they have water and sewer pipe. And as a consequence, those towns and us are both saving money because as the point you're just making there, when you share data, mm -hmm. you save yourself mistakes, problems. You said you're replacing some of the mains. How old are they? What is the life expectancy of the new ones? The, new exp the life expectancy of the new ones are, is 100 years. Um, we have older pipe in the ground in some of the municipalities that we serve uh, back to the 1920s, some in Harrisburg back further. It seems to me some of the other counties did do an agreement with the uh, gas companies because of pipelines to make sure of certain things. Um, trying to remember the name of the county specifically that I was thinking of. But is that something we should be looking at as a working agreement on behalf of all the municipalities and, and the people? Are we talking about pipe replacement, main extension? I'm, I'm not in. I guess um, in running new pipes. <clears throat> Let me say on behalf of UGI that if there's some way that we can reach agreement on where we want to go and where you want to go so we can save costs for both of us, we would be happy to talk, negotiate, agree in any way, shape, or form. It's an excellent idea, and you're right. There are other municipalities that have. Mm -hmm. I've given you two that we've been involved with, um, but there are others in the state. You're right. What's going on in the state right now, just so that you understand, is there is 12,000 miles of old pipe within the state. And the state just passed a law to encourage gas distribution companies like us to accelerate our replacement of that pipe. And we, as well as everyone else, are working as hard as we can. In UGI gas, we have 440 miles of uh, cast iron. Um, in CPG and PNG, we might have 40 miles each. But the point of the story is, uh, that's a lot of miles, that's a lot of feet to replace, but we're going to do it as fast as we can. At the same time, we still have to extend. Do you foresee a time when the gas will climb and exceed the price of oil? Never. Never? Never. We can take you to the bank on that. We can. We can. Um, and as you can see by my baldness and gray hair, I've been around a long time and I've seen the economics come and go, but with the supply, what's happened is the supply of gas because of Marcellus and others has become so much greater than the demand right now that uh, we're going to be with low gas prices for the very, very long foreseeable future. They kept finding more and more gas than they ever dreamed was possible down there. And after that, there's Utica, which is another play. So uh, he represents <laughs> consumers' interests across the board. Okay. He does a very effective job of it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would tell you, just by state law, and Sonny enforces this to the hill, we have to buy the cheapest gas that's available. 